Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host, Jason Turner. I'm available for code reviews, contracting, and on-site training. In this episode, I'm going to explore a feature from C++14 that I never appreciated, and I'm starting to feel a little silly now that this has been out for more than five years at this point, uh, depending on what compiler version you were using, uh, and, and never really fully appreciating the, um, the power of it. And I uh, owe this to going to CVPCon and going to conference talks and, you know, making me think in new and different ways. So I do strongly recommend that you go to conferences and learn more things. So uh, in this episode, I'm going to talk about C++14's variable templates. Now, the classic example for a variable template, if you were to go to the standard library documentation, is going to look a little bit like this. So it's a template to give us a particularly typed value. Now, um, if I want to return or access some various precision version of Pi, I'm going to take advantage of the new feature of Compiler Explorer to actually let us execute this code. Now, I, I can't just say print out Pi. Pi is a template. I have to give it a template type. Okay, so I'm going to give it float. And I have just created a floating point representation of Pi. So I get 3.14159. And here I'm asking for a double representation of it. Now, I'm, you know, not able to actually see more data here because I'm not using set precision or anything like that. So let's just go ahead and do that real quick. So as we can see here, this is in the IO manip header and it is standard set precision and I can use it to say, what is my floating point precision? So let's do that and see where we get. I'm gonna go ahead and just say 20. That's more precision than we have. So I am printing this as a double and I'm getting 3.14159265 five, eight, nine, seven, nine, three. And then this varies here. I don't get that last three, two, three. So then if I put this as float, then I am going to see a lower precision version of it. Again, get printed out and things, you know, fall down right around here. And if I do long double, then I should get a pretty accurate representation of what I was just trying to print. 32301, oh, right? So I've gone off the end of the precision that I actually provided. And I believe, let's see, if I say I want to print an integer version of this, then I'm going to get a compile error because I've used braced initialization. I can use parenthesized initialization or I can use static assert here. And now I can say, okay, this is all of the precision anyone should ever need when printing pi. It is the value three. Okay, so these are what we see when we see examples of variable templates, which is in fact the topic of this video, not set precision. Well, I saw these examples and I said, I don't get it. What's the point? So I wondered, what is the point? Actually, no, I didn't wonder that. I just forgot about it until I saw someone else showing me what the point was. It starts to get a little bit more interesting if we can do something like this. So now I can initialize it by calling a constant expression and I can create a constant expression variable template. And that becomes a little bit more interesting, but I still am kind of at a loss as to why and where and how I would use this. And the thing that I learned at CppCon is that variable templates can be specialized. So I can do something like So 
So recursively defined specialization of const expert variables, just like old school examples of doing this kind of thing with templates. Now, this is probably not the best use of it, but now we start to see the power that they can actually be used um, for actually relatively complicated things. And specialization and partial specialization, the same thing as class templates, opens up a whole other world of possibilities. Now, the example that I saw at CVPCon that blew my mind was an implementation of the is same type trait. I have just created a template and it is is same is false. Okay. Now I am creating a specialization of this template. Like this. So if the two types passed in are the same, then this is going to return true as opposed to being false. So Are a float and an int the same? No. Then we expect zero to be printed here. And in fact, it was. Is an int and an int the same? Yes, they are the same. We're going to expect one to be printed here because it's choosing this specialization of the variable template. Now, apparently this has a lot of implication in making much simpler type trait light things that um, are actually much more efficient at compile time. But then uh, to take these variable templates to the next level, I will give an example that was from Bjorn Faller on Twitter quite a long time ago at this point. I filed it away as something that I should probably come back to that. I didn't quite get the implications of it back when I saw it. So we can use variable templates to generate specifically typed lambdas for us. And that's interesting. I can decide that I want to do integral addition with two floating point numbers. These are doubles in this case. And so, ah, uh, I still have my compiler in C++ 14 mode. I need to be in at least C++ 17 mode if I want to use a const expert lambda here. All right, there we go. So I just said I want an add function for integers and I used a constexpr per variable template with a lambda to do this, which again just falls into the category of if you understand everything about lambdas and how they can be used and how they are built by the compiler, you understand everything that matters about C++. So uh, thanks for watching this episode of C++ Weekly. I hope this episode made some sense and gave you something that you can apply in your real world work.